All right, guys. Today's project is going to have to do with this pantry closet right here. I'm standing in the kitchen of my house, and uh, the idea I have for this is to automate the light in this pantry closet. So when we built our house, uh, and it's, I can't blame the designer because I designed it, uh, but when you open this door, I guess I could have put the light switch right here, but I put it out here. It's right here for this pantry closet thinking that you wouldn't want to open it and then reach into a dark room. So I'm going to put a little automation in place to make that light come on automatically when you open the door, right? So it'll work kind of like a refrigerator door. You open the door, light comes on, you close the door, light goes off. And then I'll just leave this light switch here too. This light switch will go anywhere. Um, that functionality will only work if the light switch is on, right? All it means is if you forget and leave the light switch on, if you will, when you close the door, it'll turn off. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, there's a few different ways you could accomplish this. One is the, the high-tech the high tech smart home method, um, in which case I could buy a smart switch, and then I could buy some kind of wireless um, uh, proximity sensor on, for the door or a, a, a magnetic contact uh, for the door, and then I could link them and program it and stuff like that. But Honestly, that would cost more money, uh, and it wouldn't be as reliable, and it would be wireless. Uh, and what I'm going to do is like an old school um, lighting control system type method. Uh, the benefits to this are um, it's super reliable because it's wired. There's no wireless whatsoever, so it's guaranteed to work. Uh, you're never going to have a problem with it. It's standalone meaning uh, it doesn't require your uh, uh, you know, smart hub to be up and running or connected to the internet or anything like that. It doesn't require Wi-Fi. It doesn't require anything. Um, so being standalone and lower cost are the advantages. The disadvantages are it's a little more work to install. So to put a system like this in, it's a little more effort and time, and you actually got to you know, get into the, in this case, somebody get into the attic, uh, and I'm going to have to install a, a, an alarm switch, uh, an alarm uh, magnetic switch on the door. Um, but really, in my opinion, I'd rather spend the extra time um, and effort to do the installation and then have a bulletproof system that I know is always going to work uh, and it's going to be reliable. So that's our project. So let's get started. So inside the pantry, try not to look at all the junk food that's on the shelves. Uh, we just got a uh, standard light fixture like this um, and something else I'm going to point out is um, in the attic the ceiling for this pantry is at 8 foot but the ceiling for this kitchen is at 10 foot so this this piece of the attic is a little oddball because it's recessed uh, that shouldn't be a big deal though but anyway there's the light we're going to automate so then probably what we're going to do this is the top of the door we're probably going to put a magnetic contact like up here somewhere um, like I've done for my alarm system in the house, and that's what we'll use. Um, to do the control logic for this project, I bought this little thing from a company called Functional Devices. I bought it on Amazon.com. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you know I buy almost everything on there. That's the, uh, that's the part number and stuff. Um, and this is just a little switching mechanism uh, that lets you use a low voltage switch like an alarm contact to, uh, to switch something that's high voltage like a light. And, uh, you know, without going into details about low voltage and high voltage, um, just know that high voltage is more hazardous because it can shock you, and low voltage uh, is less hazardous, it won't shock you, and there aren't as many requirements to um, uh, when, when you're running wires inside your walls for low voltage. Of course, you should consult your uh, local building code, so there's my disclaimer. Uh, for anybody that tries to blame me for screwing something up in their house. Uh, so this is the actual module right here. This is what it looks like. Um, and what you're looking at here is just where I've just uh, breadboarded the whole thing because I wanted to make sure it would all work. Um, so how this thing works is this mounts into your junction box that's up, up in your attic where your light is. That mounts through a hole in that junction box. Then these two wires uh, don't have to go through a junction box or anything. These go to your low voltage switch. So just to breadboard this, um, on these two low voltage switch wires, I just hooked a couple jumpers and hooked up one of these magnetic alarm switches on the other end. And that's just hooked up with temporary jumpers right there. 
And the way these things work, uh, there's a little magnet that looks just like this. It's in a little plastic housing, but it's really just a magnet. That magnet mounts uh, in the top of the door. And uh, when it comes in contact with this, and it's only got to be within like, I think, half an inch or so, um, the, cl the circuit closes. So then, uh, again, to breadboard this, I've just got me a uh, uh, little uh, power cord right here so I can plug this thing into the wall. Um, the way this thing wires up is super simple. There's a tiny little diagram right there on it uh, Or not even a diagram. It's just a little explanation of the connections. So line goes directly to the module uh, Neutral goes to your light fixture and the module and I'll just flip this over and show you how I did it um, so you see neutral goes to the module and uh, to the light fixture and then the red wire coming out of this little module is the line voltage to your light fixture. Um, so something like this, I mean, obviously before you go to all the trouble to install it and you know do a bunch of work, um, it, it's good to do a little experiment like this just to make sure it's gonna work the way you want. So I'll plug this thing in. The light came on, obviously. Um, so since this magnet is away from this sensor, that would mean the uh, door's open. If I get it close, Light goes out, open the door, light comes on, get it close, light goes out. So here's the actual module up close. Um, and you can see right here, uh, it explains how to wire it uh, on the label here. It's very simple. Um, this is a normally closed module. That's what the NC means. Uh, this company makes um, two kinds. They make one that's normally open and normally closed. Um, if you have the other kind, you, you know, be sure you get the right one. Um, if your external switch closing means that you want the light off, you want to get the normally closed. If your external switch um, being closed means the door is open, then you want to get the normally open one. So um, anyway, for the description, for, for the setup that I'm doing where when the door is closed, um, these two wires here are closed by that little magnetic contact for that. You want the normally closed and it'll act just the way you just saw it. This is probably the bulb that was put in this fixture when I built the house because LEDs weren't a big thing then, so I'll probably replace this one with an LED. Okay, now that we've got this off, I think we'll take this bar off too so we can get in there better. So you can see here where I've uh, scooped out a lot of that insulation. And there is the uh, junction box, the top of the junction box, that light fixture. And uh, right on the top there is where we'll drill a hole and mount that controller box. And uh, I pulled out a piece of the fiberglass insulation uh, that's right there. You'll notice how uh, that uh, you know, two before right there is at an angle. That's where the door is down there. So when I drill uh, up through that wall, uh, my drill bit's going to come up right there. And that's why I pulled that insulation out of the way. So I'm first going to drill it with this uh, Forstner bit, this 3 8 Forstner bit, which gives you a really nice clean hole for mounting into. So uh, that went up. Uh, 
through the all the trim board and uh, to, to a gap and then it uh, it did not go through the two before above it because uh, I poked something up there it didn't go all the way through so I'm gonna use this long bit to go up next So uh, as much as I would love for this wire on this magnetic contact to be long enough that I could splice it straight to that module, it's not long enough. It, it won't even, I don't even know that this link will reach all the way up through uh, the 2 before frame to get into the attic. So we got to extend this. So we'll, uh, this is a piece of, uh, it's just something I had. It's a piece that's kind of heavier than we need, but it's an 18 gauge in wall speaker wire. So it's two conductor. Uh, so we'll use that. So this is a switch, so polarity does not matter, so it doesn't matter which wire goes to what. So sometimes you have luck with uh, just fishing the wire. This is a pretty stiff wire. I'm going to try to straighten it out and just see if I could fish it up through the hole without using a fish tape. Looks like that's going to go. So right here, after fishing that wire up, you can see... Um, it came up right there. So I gave that wire a little tug up in the attic to pull all the slack up. And uh, these things are just friction fit. So really all you do is when you push it into place, it will uh, just wedge in there. You could tap it with a hammer, but I just like to push on it with something because I don't want to tear it up. All right, so there's our sensor. If we shut the door and you look right in there, you can see it. So all we'll do is we'll put a little pencil mark right here so that we know that we'll line right up with it with our magnet placement.
So here's our magnet. We'll just put in that hole. Okay. Okay, there's our magnet. Um, there's our sensor. So you can barely see the two in there. Lined up nicely. So if you can imagine this module here is going to go on top of this blue uh, junction box up in the attic and this uh, fitting is going to come through it. So all I'm going to do now is uh, drill a 7 8 inch diameter hole right in the center. So you can see now, I uh, after I drilled that hole, I inserted that module from the attic and I put this retaining nut on it right there. So just like we did when we breadboarded it, all the neutrals are hooked together. The black wire, which is the line voltage, hooks to the module. And then the red wire um, is what powers the light fixture. So I'm going to replace that old bulb with a LED bulb. So here we have the uh, finished product up in the attic. So you see the module mounted on top of the um, light fixture junction box right there. And um, the wire coming up from the uh, magnetic sensor for the door. A couple of wire nuts right there. Uh, that's low voltage so it's completely fine to just wire nut those and not be in a junction box. Um, and then this is done up here. All right, here we are. Nice thing about those uh, sensors is they're completely invisible. So you can't see anything up there. Open the door, light turns on, close the door, light turns off. See that? All right, another project complete. So I tested it and it works great. So cost of the project was $30 for that module um, that I bought on Amazon. And then the little magnetic alarm contacts, uh, those are probably going to be about $5 a piece. If you, the more of them you buy at one time, the cheaper it is. I actually had that one already because I had a bunch left over because I've got those contacts all over this house. Um, aside from having to, you know, reach down into that opening in the attic, which was kind of difficult um, and make those final connections. It wasn't such a bad job. Got it knocked out in a couple hours and it's all set. And like I said, the advantages are it's a standalone system. It's not dependent on any wireless, any Wi-Fi or a smart hub or anything else. And it's cheaper. If you were going to go through and try to do that with a smart system, with a smart switch and a smart sensor, it would end up costing you more than $35. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.